everyone, and welcome back once again to This Week in Guns, brought to you by Patriot Patch Company, VZ Grips, and they have Corporation and FFL Payments. This show offers commentary on all of the latest firearms, industry news, information, and bugs. I'm your host, Matthew LaRosier, and I'm joined today by... Oh, look, it's the Rat Man. He's here, and there's no one else joining us in particular. Now is there? Mr. Ivan? No. You told us that we're muted. <laughs> I, you was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I muted and then I brought you in. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, no, network, just mute me. That's fine. It's Ivan Anothias. He is here by popular uh, coincidence and circumstance. <laughs> yeah, I just wandered in the Discord to yell at you for something, and the next thing you know, I was on this show. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> you know, he literally he wandered into the Discord at two thirty a.m. The Discord, by the way, wherein you can pay me to bully you. Um, so he had to join up through the Patreon. But yeah, he wanted it at 2.30 and he was like, oh, hey, I have this question about it. I'm like, oh, sweet. Join us for Twig. And- yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you hang out in the Discord, which you get for being a patron, you can enjoy me randomly showing up and agitating Matt until he's into a screaming fit about something. Oh, by the way, Matthias is here. You get it from of CN Arsenal fame. And he has got his recoil syndicate patch on his hat, which I have one and I love. And that that reminds me of a funny story that happened mm-hmm. to me today. Okay. I uh, had bought a lathe from a Danish man. Oh, I heard this story. Yeah. I, I heard it live in real time. No, you didn't. You told you texted me the responses. Oh, oh yeah. Well that was that was yeah. later. I, I yeah, got yeah. a lathe from him actually. Oh, okay. So uh, we went with the big FL energy then. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I, <laughs> it was a good lathe. I wanted it. That's a, but, that was a complete Florida transaction. Okay, so now I have to tell the whole story. Chris. Yes, you do, because it's a Florida transaction. It was amazing. It was really interesting. So there's a lathe. Matt, post- Matt, Matt and I were grousing. Sorry, I'll, I'll set some stage for this. Matt and I were grousing because like three times in a row this month, I have tried to do a deal on a vehicle. And all three times, a man older than 70 years old has been painfully unaware of the process in which vehicles are bought and sold in America for some godforsaken reason. And so I just kept driving multiple hours after being on the phone and going, do you have A, B, and C so that we can do this deal? And then getting there, and they don't have B, or they don't have A. And I'm like, I was on the the phone. I, yeah, I, I asked you. It's like, well, I have the title. It's just in somebody else's name, and I can't sign it. And it's like, what? What, what does that mean? Like, what are you? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I told this to Matt. And Matt goes, "I've got one for you." And he shows me where someone essentially backed out of a deal on him, and he yelled at them for it. And then the guy came back and was like, I like your energy. I guess we're going through with the deal. And I was like, is this what we're supposed to do? Are we supposed to just yell at people? And then they cave? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was it was this cool lathe. Long story short, uh, CNC lathe. Uh, I negotiated the price. The guy is Danish. Um, and I have one of my brain fart moments because Danes are one of those few people who are from a country that isn't like the same root word as what their ish is right <laughs> yeah and i'm like oh yeah no, no i i know plenty of people who speak dutch is what i <laughs> oh, <laughs> he, was like, he just like oh, stops and looks at me and i'm like that's not even that's not even one of the scandinavian countries they don't like that yeah well it's it's all bullshit it's all fake look so, no, I mean, you could have said Icelandic or something, and they'd have been okay. But yeah, like, and then he's just like, "Oh, don't, don't say that mm. around Danes. <laughs> they, uh, you will not be popular." <laughs> and I was like, "Whatever, dude." And uh, but so we make a deal. We shake hands, and he's like, "Oh, I'm just not sure what to do because there is other people who want to see it." And I'm like, well, we shook hands. That's that means something where I'm from. Right. We agreed on a price yeah. and a day for pickup, and we shook hands. Yeah, and I mean, it's like, very heavy. <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, "Oh, yeah." I'm like, that means something where I'm from. Shaking hands on a on a price, right? Like you understand? Yes, absolutely. 
And so I'm like, okay, cool. So I go back, I clean up my shop, I make a space for it, um, and I tell him, hey, I cleaned up my shop and I'll be there on this day. And then he's, I was, I was, and so I follow up, I'm like, which time, like, when will you be available? And he's like, oh, well, let me let, I'll let you know after this next guy comes to see it. And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> he's like, yeah, no, there's just one guy who who wanted to check it out. I was like, we made a deal. He's like, right, but I have to see if if maybe he'll offer me more. And I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, he's like, because I, I have to get the most for the machine. So I'm like. Yeah, after after you shook hands, it became yeah. an auction. Yeah, no. So I was like, all right, so <laughs> that's fine. Clearly, there was a misunderstanding. Uh, my offer is rescinded. Good luck with your sale. And then, yeah, he comes back like, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it literally says, I like the passion you have for what you do. I will take you off. <laughs> <laughs> you think it was like a bluff? You think he was just trying to bluff and it just blew up? That, what kind of a bluff would that possibly be? I don't know. I, like to be fair, I had one today on the other side of town. I've been looking at these like old... We got a bunch of the guys looking for scooters now. I started a thing. And so I've been helping the guys look out for scooters, but they i'm I trying hate, to by the way i've decided i hate it you hate that i'm letting the guys play with scooters i hate i hate scooters you're just jealous because you're not here to f around by the way we're going 70 something miles an hour these are not like 50 cc's so um they, they still just don't get have their... hand clutches no they're horrible cvts which has its own challenges but um yeah it's like a bike it's like a mountain bike transmission but <laughs> allegedly self-regulating <laughs> It's, it's like a, it's like the inside of a yo-yo. Um, <laughs> no, just but just they're two today, yo-yos and they're pointed at each other. Literally, just today, somebody listed something on the other side of the county. I went, oh wait, one of the guys might like that. I'll go ahead and ask them about whatever because on the listing it says clear title, and so I go, yeah, yeah. As long and I think I'm being redundant, but I'm just like, hey, as long as you got that title in hand, I'll get out there and take a look because I can throw it on the trailer and one of the guys will pay me back. There, a couple bunch of guys are looking, and. uh I guess because I asked the redundant question, but well, guess what he says? Well, the lady that sold me, it didn't have the title, so I'm waiting on the DMV to get back to me and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, why did you put clear title mm -hmm. in the thing? And he's just like, well, she told me that it, it does have a clear title. I'm like, right, but you're not her. It, like, it's like two steps removed from you having a clear title, and yet we still put it in clear title. Like, this is the... I can't. I'm going crazy with this shit right now. I was trying to get a S10... I was trying so hard to get an S10. It's not working. It keeps auto focusing on the man behind you. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's not. It's, not. But I was trying so hard. it's, it's like facial recognizing the much larger no, face no, behind not. you. No, it's not. Uh, the, what man behind him? No, there's, there's, there's no nothing man. there. There's nothing there. It's a green um, screen. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted by this liar, uh, I was trying so hard from the camera, trying to, make to it get an S10, you. and I I made like. The same thing as you. I was like, you got the title. It's clean. No leans. Right? Like, it drives straight. <laughs> and I shit you not. Three times. I The first time, I go out. I check the I check the truck. Truck's good. It's everything I want. And I'm like, where's the title? And he's like, oh, here it is. And he hands me this, like, incredibly obvious fake title. Oh, like, like, photocopy obvious? Yes. Like on a like a four, you know. I'm like, uh, this is not a title. He's like, yeah, this is just right there, certificate title. And I'm like, this is a photocopy of a title. <laughs> He's right. like, oh well, you see. And then it's it started right, and I'm like, ah, yeah. and I leave. And then the next like, this one, this is a Photoshop. I can tell by the pixels. Yeah, the next one. Well, it wasn't even good. Like it, there was a huge white border. Oh, the God. next one I go, you know, I've got the title and I turn it over and there's a huge lean on the back. And I'm like, how do you owe money on a 2001 S10? Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so didn't get it. Like, and that happened three. And then finally, like, I went to one and you know what? It wasn't quite right. And it, the price was a little too high, but I was like, let me see the title. And he pulls out a title and I'm like, oh, fuck it. I'll yeah, that's what happened to me. I did like two, I had two abortive attempts at like yeah. one kind of thing, and yeah. the third one I was like, you know, what? you're getting an extra two hundred bucks on this deal because 
because you have I'm a title. I'm so sick of this. <laughs> you have because you can actually legally sell this vehicle. It's a scam. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so that's that's been great. Uh, let's yeah, ten minutes of banter done dusted let's talk about the um the little april joke uh, event fools that people did so mm. wait, is it april? a couple of these were okay uh this one i loved the springfield armory m2a and at first you look at it you're like oh it's just got a long mag but then you look and it's like no that's not a gas block it's a two-barreled m1a where are they putting the gas block i wouldn't worry about it okay it's uh it, it might be bullet operated yeah, okay. yeah introducing the new m2a rifle with dual 18 inch barrels and a custom gas system for unmatched performance it's unique design featuring a proprietary 40 round magazine and receiver chambers two rounds of 308 ammunition simultaneously delivering unparalleled firepower in a compact package so, okay yeah. so you know short recoil lock right yeah is there a way to have two barrels and have each barrel act as the piston for the other barrel using a short recoil like system? Yeah, sure, whatever. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I don't actually know. But like the, the way this Photoshop is, is the gas ports are literally just bleeding into each other. So maybe they just fight until they both. No, it's the, uh, what was it, the gas gun that the Germans designed at the end of the war? It's just the modern equivalent of that. Or. If you could fire them independently, this would be literally a, a gymnasticator. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's a gymnasticated M14. <laughs> no, no, no. I got it. It's the second barrel is actually a short barrel, and it can only fire once while you're doing your reload, so you never have an empty chamber on your reload. <laughs> yeah, <I've> never <laughs> been. <laughs> That's good. All right, but yeah. And then the other one was the Smith & Wesson 500J, a J-frame in 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. And uh, they didn't even do a good job on Photoshop. Yeah, I was going to say, they didn't Photoshop it. That needs to have, like, the thinnest looking barrel. Like, it needs to look yeah. scary. Yeah, no, they just put 500 Magnum on a, a J for it. They, like, it, it, this was low effort. Uh, I rate, yeah, come on. I rate zero. Ten minutes of Photoshop and I go <laughs> I, I rate very Smith & Wesson of you out of ten. <laughs> you didn't try. <laughs> yeah. Is that the one that they make in the pink grips? I'm sure yeah. they do. So yeah. They do the, they do a J series like five shot these days because I just got my hands on one the other day and the trigger is way worse than they used to be. Aren't all the J series five pops? Is that I don't know enough about modern. Yeah. I don't know. I literally laid hands on one because like look, it's got a paint grip. And then um, I was also looking for something for Mexican carry, and, <laughs> and uh, no, no, the trigger was terrible. <laughs> so fine. there went that idea. This is that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's that's all good. So the first news story this week: Governor Glenn Youngkin uh, of Virginia, mm -hmm. which I still can't decide which is worse uh, between them and North Carolina. <laughs> he has acted on sixty-seven bills, vetoing thirty uh, because they would punish law-abiding gun owners violating their constitutional rights. Uh, this is to say nothing of him signing um, a bill about willfully allowing a child who poses a credible threat of violence to access a firearm, which, you know, for access provisions are, are always problematic, and uh, one which prohibits the manufacturer transfer or possession of an auto sear, which is a illegal device which converts firearms into automatic weapons. That's what automatic means. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so then it, it was actually interesting because I looked at his veto statements. Um, so we'll just go through really quick the ones he vetoed. Uh, criminalizing an individual's possession of a firearm in a building owned or operated by a public institution of higher education. Good one to veto. Mm -hmm. uh, criminalize. Oh, so this one's super interesting. Uh, this bill, House Bill 585, which would criminalize home-based firearms dealers who maintain their place of business at their residence within one and a half miles of an elementary or middle school. And, and he says, by all appearance, this legislation targets a single person in Prince William County to whom the Prince William Board of County Supervisors granted a home-based firearms license. Uh, the legislation's specificity coupled with the circumstances preceding his package, uh, his passage, 
comprises a bill of attainder. Consequently, it is unconstitutional under the Virginia Bill of Rights. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's I mean, so fucking weird. Yeah, aside from just this one guy case that they figured out. Yeah. A mile and a half? Yeah, that's like so yeah, like it's, it's so specific, but also... If you think about it in terms of not just like a regular school, but daycares or anything else, good luck in a city center or not even city center, but like suburbia. Good luck with the overlapping circles that are like one, two miles apart. You know what I mean? It's yeah, going to be, so hey, your camera grabbed that guy that's hiding behind you again. There's no guy behind me. <laughs> <laughs> There's no guy. Um, we had that similar here. They set up a PSA over. Um, you have a fake guy? No, we had a, a PSA that was setting up. Uh, west of the Ashley River here, and they tried jumping on them because the city's blue, unlike the state. And they tried jumping on them about being like so close to a school, and they're going, the school that's on the other side of two twelve foot tall fences and a giant moat of a drainage ditch that no one can get across. You know, yeah, that's that's great. But yeah, the 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 governor vetoed a whole bunch of stuff, an assault weapons ban, a, a homemade firearms ban. Um, he sent some bills back for. Edits, one of which, uh, you know, most importantly for our purposes, being uh, what they attempted to turn into a homemade gun ban. And he's like, what if you mm -hmm. just turn it back to a undetectable firearm ban and add knowingly? Mm. So that's, he's like, yeah, that's actually a good reverse card. Yeah. <laughs> if you do it by accident, it's okay, though. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah. that's that story. <laughs> uh, How many did he let through? Was there anything he let through that was dubious i i, I don't I, do but the two there yeah um he well he signed 27 bills i'm sure they're all dubious right because they're all bills but the two <laughs> ones that are like noteworthy is the access bill he did veto another access bill which was just like a, a more you know broad safe storage law um where any you know basically you get in trouble if any child potentially could get access to it and it, instead it's willfully allowing a child who poses a credible threat of violence have access and it's like okay so still what the fuck does that mean because that means you are not allowed to directly hand firearms to turbo spurgs and say get them boy <laughs> bull cuts. yeah no bull cuts. you're out of here don't stay away from my cabinet yeah um and then the yeah the, the it's another glock switch bill which has like become in vogue recently for reasons um, nothing to do with a certain city. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but. Oh, this is something I wanted to talk to you guys about before we keep pressing into the news. So you you mentioned a new PSA store opening up and we're seeing PSA like really aggressively expand into every fire yes. submarket, including you the ones that shouldn't be expanded into you you don't even know so being in south carolina in the gun industry in the palmetto whispers, state yes whispers come my way but i am mr nda nda man but um let me give you an example i can give you something that i can say they are expanding so rapidly that i was talking to their vp the other day i just bumped into him and uh I mentioned knowing about a project that they're currently working on before they ever signed the NDA with that guy because it's a it was a known public product before that, and I knew more privately about it because I'm friends with the person they bought out. I'm and friends then, with that person, too. <laughs> I yes. think I know this one. But there's a brief moment in which I'm talking to yeah. one of the Js, as we call them, because uh, it was the two brothers, right. um, in which I mentioned the project a little too much, and he gives me an eye, and I said, oh, I knew about that before the NDA because I didn't want to mm -hmm. get my buddy in trouble. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, at the same time, I said, did you know about this other thing? And he just stares at me. And I went, I'm going to take that as you probably know about that other thing. And now you have paperwork on that, too. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> and the problem is, like, I couldn't find a way. We, we're, we couldn't have a normal conversation because I think he doesn't even know how many things are secret now because they've just been running around rapidly expanding. Um, and they're digesting everything in sight. Now, I do know through the grapevine that they do it by ad hoc. They're just taking over whatever's already working to a certain degree and then refine it. The problem is they don't have consolidation yet of all of their different arms in terms of how their engineering goes. So every cell has its own set of engineers and uh, delivery mechanism, right? So I do know that they've started making the moves to unify 
their design work. Cause you know, even just, it's hard to explain, but if you're not from an engineering background, um, even just the way you collect your datum points or how you reference one part to another, or how you jig something for manufacturing, they're not consistent within one structure in PSA, which is why you see really weird behavior from certain products versus others from PSA. It's all over the place because it is many, it's a Hydra right now. Um, and so they're slowly unifying. Um, I do know that they're moving in a direction to try to unify and improve the design side of things. But the funny thing is I, I have spoken to someone who looked at uh, drawings that he, you know, he was given uh, machine drawings for what they were doing. And they said, Hey, find some faults in this. And he goes, okay, uh, X, Y, and Z. And they're like, good. Okay. That was revised in this edition. And they show him the next edition. And he goes, Oh, this has like three more problems. And they go, uh, and he goes, Oh my God, are these the production drawings? <laughs> so they're like, PSA is moving so fast that they just, they just fix it on the fly. And so it doesn't always get back to their drawings. Um, which is great because you're getting a low cost product. You're getting it very quickly and you're getting large numbers. Um, PSA might be our best bet for a world war at this point. They are the most rapid manufacturer in America. Uh, the pro problem for them is trying to make sure that they have that quality right from gen one on every product. And they're slowly getting better at it. Anything that's gen three in PSA is already. So great. I didn't it's want not... this to turn into a PSA ad. I actually, um, <laughs> uh, I actually, uh, I'm very concerned. Um, Why? And I, I, here's my thing. Okay. How close are we to PSA becoming an antitrust concern? Um, not I, very. I, I don't, like I don't know. Cause it depends. Do you count it as American manufacturing or not? Vertical integration though. But they're buying up all the little guys. Like, well, well but, but, you compare That's, what are the big guys these days? Like Glock, that, Glock, are, the Glock and almost... Glock and Sig are on the up and up. They're, they're they're still doing okay, but Smith and Wesson's fucked. Colts fucked. Remington like, Remington Turbo of, fucked. A lot of the big guys are just importers too. Don't forget. right. I mean, but right. but like but so uh, this behavior of purchasing every single like and they're going top to bottom. It's I think they're doing a great. They're, they're I think it's vertical integration though, which is what like the antitrust act doesn't like i mean yes but how there's still big players out there that are doing good numbers who and then to be honest with you they're it's hard who to tiered? dislike huh who subject to the antitrust laws what do you mean like who is moving that amount of metal that is subject to the antitrust laws oh no but that's the so is the argument that they're is a certain volume at which you have to let other no, people I'm be saying competitive with you? The degree, the like rapidity. <laughs> so look, I don't like really believe in antitrust. I think that if you, I think that monopolies can be healthy. Um, but I'm starting to feel like their hyper aggressive acquisitions are going to pose. Well, one they're I think they stand to a pretty credible threat of murdering the craft firearms industry. And to be fair, I, I sincerely hope that they spark competition because I we have seen doing that. We've seen easily 60 years of degradation of the firearms market in the United States and people haven't noticed. Now, have there been innovations that have come along like the plastic fantastics? Yes. The wonder nines. Yes. You know, there's some stuff that is an exception to that, but in right. general, in terms of having a big quality name that delivers on tight margins, we haven't really seen that since a few years after World War II, in which sort of the last hurrah of this in America was almost like the shotgun market falling apart when it became just a discount market. So everybody went to discount market. And then once it became discount market, you then had it eventually come around to tactical market. And then that's really all you had. You had the discount side and the tactical side and almost nothing in between. PSA has done a pretty good job of bringing in a healthier version of the reproduction market. You know, you saw Brownell struggle with their ARs and I stuff like that. I don't agree but... with you. And I also think that there's no <clears> data <throat> to suggest that it's even remotely healthy because they haven't succeeded on delivering in anything yet. Like the Harrington and Richard stuff, we've only seen it for a moment. You're only thinking the most recent stuff. You can go get a Chinese clone AK. No, you can't. What? <laughs> what are you no, you, no, you cannot. They're on the rack here. No, I mean, no, I mean, no. no. Listen, I, 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 I never thought for a moment that 
like that I, I would hit a nerve well, is here. Is your AK autism speaking? No, there is no, the there is not. not nothing about that gun that is even remotely close to what makes a Chinese type of these. Yet, how many are 56? selling, and how excited are people about it? I mean, they look cool. It's beautifully blued. It's nice. Like I think it's a good AK. I have a acute concern <clears throat> with a couple of the deals that you and I know a lot about, and I'm saying, I don't think. I, I, I don't think they had any business doing that. And I think that it stands to destroy other companies that are doing similar things. And I, unfortunately, I have to vague post in that direction. I don't but, think so. So, like, because, uh, so acquiring on. every company that you see that produces a couple hundred guns at a time. They're not acquiring anything with hostility. And they're digesting everything in sight that I know of. I have known of at least one company to get absorbed because they did not uh, uphold their own contracts. That's something else, though. Mm -hmm. um, but the, not, as far as I've seen, no hostile takeovers. And then the other thing is incomplete reproductions, I believe, breeds a market for complete reproductions. I sincerely believe that having something that is close to original makes people want to either modify or acquire something that's closer to original because that's where the tism starts. Do not discount the fact that we are out of Mosin Nagants. If you want people to care about the old stuff or uh, have something other than a, a utility or tactical market, you're going to have to have entry pieces that are not perfect. I mean, with the 9130s, we all act like they're amazing. You know, everybody bought a Mosin 9130 years ago and we act like they were amazing, but they're all 1950s, 60s re-blues that you know sat in some locker in ukraine for however long that look nothing like they would have in world war ii they're just they're way too dressed up the the they're packed with grease the stocks have been redone like they don't look like a world war ii rifle as much as we think they look like a world war ii rifle as a matter of fact most video games depict them as the re the refurbished gun instead of the actual original coloring and stuff like that and so we are in a distorted market ourselves we've grown up with it we just don't realize it PSA is doing the same thing. It's going to create a slightly distorted market because they're going to have like the argument we have with the Chinese AK and people are going to be like, this is a Chinese AK. And then someone is going to be a smart ass like Matt and say, no, it's not because it's going to have the boom, 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 boom. And some people are going to convert and that's going to drive more interest in originals. I think there's room to be the niche manufacturer in support of a larger product that's just turn in numbers because there's no way that they're going to go into the little autistic details that someone that's a smaller batch could do, if that makes sense. Okay, so I don't think, I, I think it's totally fine to have imperfect reproductions. I think that the Chinese AK was like a very bad example because okay. that wasn't, I think the H&R stuff is like the best example. And, of, and we don't have wait, any, the, like- The best example of them eating something they shouldn't eat? No, no, of them producing a, a repro. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, I think they did a great job with that. The Chinese AK is like, they just recolored the the PSAK. Yeah. And then they put a funny bayonet on it. And yeah. Then... But my point is the bad repros. I actually prefer the bad repros. In a well, lot so of no, there's like, there's nothing wrong with the PSA. But the thing is like to say they've done it for the Chinese AK. Well, no. I'm you just trying can, to understand. You can take any, like a PSA, <laughs> the PSA Chinese one is as... I'm not. I'm not talking about little dippy like bullshit. There's like substantial okay, I guess mechanical differences. I'm, str I'm struggling to understand the concern. The about... concern is that like, okay, here was the question. The question which you suspiciously got okay. aggressive about. Okay, was at what point do do you guys think? And I, I brought. I asked this question not because I have a specific opinion on it. I like PSA shit, and I'll keep buying it. Right. Uh, what? But my question to the three legally sophisticated people here, uh, you know, the two of you and, <laughs> um, but <laughs> the the question is, at what point would they, in each of your opinion, pose a credible antitrust problem? Like, what would I think happen? In American history, you're lucky to have had more than three manufacturers of a firearm type. So remember the notorious Colt and Winchester agreement that they stayed out of each other's way? So basically for revolvers or handguns in general had Colt and then a couple other people who barely held it together and probably were just there to keep them from being hit with a monopoly. 
And then with the Winchester stuff, yeah, you have Winchester versus Remington for a number of years. And then a handful of other very specialized stuff floating around. And I'm sure somebody's going to point out some third example, but you get my point. You were lucky at any time in American history to even have five people offering something in the category that you were looking at. You know, you're kind of hard pressed to say, hey, I was looking for a shotgun in 1940. What brands were available to me? To name more than five for, let's say, a semi automatic shotgun is going to be pretty hard to do. Um, and so I don't think we're anywhere near that point with PSA yet because I can certainly name five handgun manufacturers in the tactical line. I can name more than five even on the high end shotgun line right now, especially because the biggest competition for PSA right now is actually a lot of Turkish imports. Mm. Um, there's a ton of low cost options in the Turkish import side of things right now, too. And so I think right now they're just doing what they should be doing and they're setting an example for low cost, uh, let's say medium quality. And then they're starting to get into high quality because they're just, they're getting used to what they're doing. They're getting their legs under them. Um, I think so they priced... answer the question. The question I, is I think... at what point would it trigger? Yeah, when you start getting below five options, that's when you start. That's when you can start five, to worry. I cannot find five self-loading <laughs> rifles that aren't owned by this. Like that's that's when you not so, not five rifles, but five, five companies, companies in that class. Yeah. So the problem is, you guys think of almost as class because it's not firearms in general, right? But if you're like mid-price, hey, the the serviceable firearm, right? If I want a hunting bolt-action rifle, how many companies can I choose from? More than five right now. Yeah, and there's plenty of times in U.S. history where you're lucky to have five. I mean, you're more likely to see three. So that's that would be my big point, is I don't I don't think we're anywhere near being this sort of like... And the other thing is I don't see signs of collusion on price fixing or anything like that. So that's the other thing that makes me worried when I see what might be a monopoly is when you get down to a limited number, a limited selection at everybody's prices look like everybody else's prices. It seems like PSA keeps making everybody mad by making lower prices. So... I don't know. I'm just not that worried about it yet. Also, it's South Carolina, so it's it's ours. We're just gearing up for the next one. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, Ivan, what about you? At least, you know, admittedly, antitrust law and history is not something that I've looked a ton into. I I understand the concern from a standpoint of with their current trajectory, it's not going to be long before like every other gun is something that's PSA or PSA owned venture. And I mean, I don't know. I've done enough looking into on, you know, the PSA's holding company is very well divested from just gun stuff. They're like, uh, maybe not quite BlackRock level, but like they own a lot of stuff that isn't gun companies. It's, it's certainly interesting to look into, which mm -hmm. I guess is right. This is how venture capital works. They yeah. find something that makes them money and they make money off of it. And, uh, at least given that, I think that sort of puts them higher in the crosshairs from a standpoint of it's not like the highest echelon of PSA's ownership chain is it's PSA. Uh, it goes much higher than that. And so especially given the fact that, you know, to Othias' point, there are certain times in history when you had two or three manufacturers making something, and that's it. And But in all, in, in, I think pretty much any of those cases, at least around the world wars, the government wouldn't have tried to antitrust Winchester or anybody else because that's you know that's well, where do they get their guns <laughs> when they really need them? They wouldn't they wouldn't really eat their own. You know, oh, you'd be surprised how stupid. No, the there's, there's would actually be. a video that uh, <laughs> me that we want to do that we will do eventually on one of the times they ate their tail very hard. <laughs> yeah, they literally they absorbed <laughs> yeah, like, them once. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is the British government killing Webley and then being like, yeah. "Where's all our handguns at?" And you're like, "Well, you guys literally put them out of business." <laughs> Enfield, turn on the revolvers. Enfield goes, what? <laughs> I, had a, I had a guy emailing me today where he had uncovered some great stuff about Inglis. And he's so, just like, uh, you won't believe this, but the British government did not help with that at all. And I'm like, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it entirely. No, I, it, taking him apart is not the... But anyway, uh, so so for you, Ivan, then I guess it would be the point where you every other gun... I think so. at that point, especially if you have, you, w w my understanding of antitrust is it's all executive-led crackdowns. Mm -hmm. I think if you have a, you know, a, a, you know, a, a president that is as anti-gun as Biden's puppeteers are, where they're willing to like use any executive loop or hook, or e even if it's entirely you know made-up hook, right. in any sort of law to come after things, I think PSA is an incredibly lucrative target from a standpoint of. 
they are sort of you know stand alone from a standpoint of they expressly don't want to sell guns to cops in the military they only want to sell guns to civilians and they're trying to make it cheap and if you look at the history of well i mean they've literally said that they 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 were hung up on the in common use and then that made them want to crank out as many like at the time it was ar lowers and they were just like, let's just get these out. Like, you remember the Blem sales for like yeah. 25 bucks or whatever? Yeah. I mean, here in South Carolina, it was nuts. You guys don't know because they emerged on the national stage. But, you know, when they first started getting out on the national stage, you would just go into their sh- one store and there'd just be pile sales of Blem whatever when no one had ever heard of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's just the good old boys being like, hmm, I guess I'll build another one. And the next more. thing you know, it became like the culture everywhere to just sort of huck ARs together. No, no one was doing that that viciously beforehand. Right. I mean, there was hobbyists, but all of a sudden it was every Yahoo with a wrench was on it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that sort of paints them in a... I mean, you know, and I'm sure this is something that anti-gunners have already wargamed from a standpoint of... I doubt it. I, I don't know. I, 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 I doubt... I, I mean, nowadays they could look back and see it, but I don't think a single one of them c- understands how much they missed the ball on well, that I'm, thing rolling I, I'm sure I'm sure they could now see that they've missed the ball but if at least if I was an anti-gunner I wouldn't be you know, I certainly wouldn't disarm myself of the avenue of if it gets to a point that a company whose stated goal is we're going to try and make it as difficult as possible to ban you know the specific things that anti-gunners want to ban right it's it's cheap AR-15 I mean it's cheap guns in general right that's that's been the anti-gun thrust since like the 70s at least it's it's the cheap guns that the uh, ne'er-do-wells can afford and then uh, you know, AR-15s, military-style stuff. And that's sort of PSA's bread and butter. And so finding finding anything that you could use to cast stones at them, like if it gets to a point that, hey, every other gun is you know, one of theirs, they're, you know, they, they, you know, they essentially own right. the U.S. firearms market at that point. If I was an anti-gunner and I was you know, then pulling you know, Biden strings, I might as well just have... So, you know, some amount of anti, even if it's just an antitrust investigation to get them to pump the brakes yeah but what are you going to do i mean if you break them up like i said at the beginning of this whole talk they're still very cellular i don't know that it would slow them down much if well they were it's not it, you know we're not saying that antitrust is a thing that it works or is smart or or is good in any way but so right. let me let me i'll answer my own question then it is to at what point do i think it would be a problem uh, or at what point is there a credible threat honestly so the, the issue is there's got to be that hook to start the investigation. And then once it's started, they they look at the steps that were taken and the reasons behind them. And the thing that's super suspicious is vertical integration, right? So like occupying a market horizontally is not viewed like with as much suspicion, even though I think it's kind of like weirder. But yeah. uh, like the. <laughs> By the way, you guys don't see it from the outside. When you're in state with the stores, they are very horizontal. So you go in there, and it's like a Cabela's. I mean, they've got Olukai sandals or whatever. You know, they've got a ton of fishing gear. It's the, the website in the stores. But are, I went there with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I was talking to the audience. I oh. know you've been to the PSA. So um, <laughs> there is other things you know, in there. There's a lot of stuff that they don't sell. That they it's don't very wear. much now. It's an outdoorsman store. But when you get to the gun side, you know, like when you go to the Capella's and you go to the gun side, you're like, oh, there's some guns here. Yeah. Only when you go to the PSA, you go to the gun side. You're like, oh, my God, they have everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bought a lower in person. Yeah. Uh, which was cool. Uh, but then you got recognized and nobody and then you tried for 10 minutes to convince the guy that i was famous yeah. and he was like who's this idiot that was weird. And i think you had twenty thousand subscribers at the time or something it was hilarious yeah it was funny like, uh, but anyway, anyway so i think that like i think that they'd have some trouble if they were looked into right now but i also i also think they'd fight like hell and the state's not about to not back them up too yeah and then, and also, if they succeeded in breaking them up, I don't think it would make a difference. <laughs> no, like, like, what's that video where you like smush a spider and all the little baby spiders? Yeah. Go around? <laughs> yeah, and they're still like a big spider shape. But, also, if you took away PSA, do you know how many people you would piss off? Like, oh yeah, my god, no, that's, it would be that's, that's the favorite. St- we we are, the, by the fact that we're commenting on a podcast, you know what I mean? We're we're tier two idiots, like normal idiots, right? just the the people who aren't doing any research they don't care they don't live online they're not terminal autists 
PSA has the cheap guns and all of them. Yeah. And that is where they go. You yep. know what I mean? Those I sorted by price. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. 15, and then, lowest and first. <laughs> and when that little thing goes away, they're going to be like, who did this? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, all right. Well, no, I, that was, I thought that was going to be a funny little discussion, but it turned into, <laughs> turned into something substantial, which is good. I hope, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I hope you guys don't think I'm a fucking antitrust shill. I'm not. No, uh, you're just jealous because your state doesn't have it. We got the best. We got the best. Well, okay, so no, let, let me point. So now I'll make a counterpoint to what you said. You said De- we had we had over a decade of being made fun of for There's PSA. Only times and where now the tables have turned. A gun from more than three places, right? Well, I'm going to push back on that. I I think that history bears out that the majority of the firearms industry has always been smaller players, uh, going all the way back uh, to to the founding. And I I think that like in the immediate post industrial revolution, you have a like a a fairly short period of time where that wasn't the case right which is the time you're most interested yeah, yeah. in um but then we we've now gone back to a right there's thousands of ffls and uh you know many yeah, but we're many. going beyond that though because you're you're already involved in the 3d printing community which has involved a whole bunch of people exactly you need to be reminded what an out of battery safety is but other than that they're doing good <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, they don't need to be reminded they need to be taught uh, the, the reminder is that <laughs> anyway uh, but uh i think that uh i don't know i think that there's a i will say i like psa a lot i think that they've, they've i think that they're on net very positive uh but i think that i do think that they pose a serious problem to the the quality um of the firearms market uh in the future and uh that's that's where i'll leave that uh, i th- think that I think that blowing out, blowing out the bottom of the middle, may be like, it may make the price of a quality firearm actually increase substantially. That's my. Concern. You think so? That's my concern. That's my concern. I don't know. Meh. Meh. Anyway, you know what's really not like concerning and is in Florida. VZGrips.com. Wow, look, guys, VZ Grips has all of the latest Hydra daggers for stabbing snakes. They've also got our most popular 1911 revolver Beretta CZ75 grips and the VZ Krell Aztec full size limited run executive Gen 2 dagger. Guys, go to VZGrips.com. They're a Florida company. They're good for you, it's good for your bones. And you will use the promotional code uh, this week 15 to get yourself 15 percentages off of the order and it's important to do this guys it's important Wait, they're, ma- they're making 365 grips uh yeah for the sharps bros grip module what is that it's gay as shit but, but if you have that go ahead and <laughs> this uh here's <laughs> some kind of stupid cigar well, to I be mean, fair I, 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 i'm, I'm actually kind of curious because it i don't usually like molded grips i like replaceable grip panels so that's kind of curious to me do you have a 365? No, I don't, but I just thought... Right, because it's great. I, I like replaceable side grips more than molded grips. That's all I'm saying. I will say they have made it more attractive looking. It definitely looks better. Yeah, definitely. What did it look like originally? I've never seen that before. A, P, a P365? You've never seen one? No. With the, do they have side panel grips? No. No, no this is... A, the Sharps Bros makes this whole module for this instance. That's what I'm saying. I have not seen a base Sharps Bros no. module without VZ grips, the VZ grips look sweet on it. And then you started talking smack and I went, but it looks kind of sweet. I'm over here promoting the product and you're talking smack. Here it is. It is loading from our friends optics planet. They'll ship it eventually. Uh, Oh yeah. The VZ grips are way better looking. Yeah. That that looks weird. It also doesn't, the texture doesn't look good. It looks like fake wood. Like where they were trying to. Yeah, no, I get the VZ grips for that. Yeah. No, if you carry that, get Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah, wow. Maybe buy it just over a, half the gun. A whole nother um, gun. Wait, uh, can I read all your tabs? What else you got going on in here? Some normal stuff. Anyway, um, this hold is- on. Wait, on the VZ grip side. Last time we talked about this, don't forget, we never did try to get the 1911 grip for the AR-15 and put the VZ grips on that. <laughs> We have to remember to do that next time. Yeah, no, we, yeah, they got the 3D printable thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, All right, somebody, sorry, keep going. 
Somebody made one for Ivan's plastic off too, which was fun. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. An yeah. AK that takes nineteen eleven grips. Yep. Oh, that is awesome. We yeah. should nineteen eleven grip everything, and that would sell more BZ grips. Why do I not hate nineteen eleven grips on stuff that is a nineteen eleven? Because they're actually fairly good ergonomically. The rake was very well designed. Yeah. They're also know, single stack grips. Look at a regular one right here. It does works pretty good. It's definitely not a regular one, but it's a ahead. regular one. It's a regular nineteen eleven in the regular caliber. Is that the safety on the other side? Hmm. So the slide safety? Normal one. No, no, that's a tangent sight. It's the regular one. Mm, okay. Yeah. I love that hammer. <laughs> it's just straight off the star, like nineteen fourteen. Yeah. We've changed everything, but we're keeping the hammer. <laughs> I like that it's just a man liquor inside that looks looks like a nineteen eleven. <laughs> it's like the most fucked up part of it. Uh, it doesn't have the exoskeleton. That's the weird part, though. They did right before that model. I know. Yeah. Which is, I have one now. If I anybody hasn't friend. seen it, we, we have an episode on Monlicker 1905 pistol. Go watch it. Yeah. Uh, the Monlicker 1905 has this interesting thing where, in order to make the pistol as small as possible, imagine you take a pistol and you take a magazine well, and then you wrap the lock work around the magazine well. <laughs> So that it's as like it's a, it's like a sword. It's like this little tiny grip, and it's just an exoskeleton of lock work, and then you just put sheet metal over that practically. And it's just it's, a, it's as small as you could possibly make a semi-automatic. It's it's brilliant, it's super cool. and horrible, horrible. <laughs> yeah, barely works. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a super interesting case. It involves a completely regular person, um, in the regular state, Montana. Doing the normal activity of patrolling your yard with mm -hmm. a 20 gauge shotgun and all six rounds of ammunition that you own to protect your mother from the neighbor who you believe uh, seems to have uh, that your mother has a restraining order against. Wait, seems to have a restraining order, or she did have a restraining order? It <laughs> all of the records were confusing. I believe him. Oh, okay. And then imagine you're doing that. And you begin facing federal charges. Now, what would the federal charges be? Ooh, 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 ooh. Hold on. Can I actually make a real guess? Yeah. Did they get him on some game law where he had more than three rounds in the shotgun? <laughs> that would be funny. If, yeah, because he, he shot it at one bird. Yeah. <laughs> Everything was cool until you shot that finch. Yeah, the game warden got him. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was the Gun Free School Zones Act. Oh, this is the mile and a half thing again. No, so it's a, the 1,000 feet. So his house was right across the street from the school. And right. he's pacing back and forth in his yard. I have a question. Do we know if he had buckshot or birdshot? It did not say. Because if it's birdshot, he's not doing anything 1,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> he'd previously, he'd been arrested in 2013. Uh, when He... Had an altercation with police in 2013 when he had a loaded 22 caliber firearm. So okay. he's, he's upgraded or downgraded. It's yeah, we don't know. We don't know yeah. if, it's, if it's 20 gauge, it's probably birdshot, let's be honest. Yeah. But the wildest thing about this is you think you're like, well, hey, well that can't work, right? That can't work because he was on his property, right? That can't work. But then you read it and he like freely admitted to going onto the sidewalk and kind of like wandering up and down a little bit. Uh, so, this is why you don't talk to cops. Yeah, well, so what happened was he's there. People keep calling the cops on him because he's like menacing in his yard, right? And like he's a 56 year old dude just being, being himself, he's having a time. And the local cops get called and they're like, hey man, like stop it. You know, like, and there's also this federal law you should probably stop. So, like, could you please get a concealed carry? This would make it a lot easier on everybody. Yeah, so Homie calls the FBI. W wait, he calls the FBI? Yes. Himself? Yes. Okay, keep going. Because they have violated his rights. Wait, that, he calls the FBI because the FBI violated his rights? Up front. Or does he call the FBI because the local police violated his rights? No, the, the police didn't do anything. He called the FBI saying, hey, how are you going to, like... Basically, you know, paraphrasing, super paraphrasing, it's like, how is this local cop going to say that you can do this? Like, that's against my rights. 
What? And so you know what they did? Okay. Uh, well, somebody, an ATF uh, local whatever, like, they have a new acronym for him, uh, then goes and surveys him and watches him uh -huh. leave his property with the shotgun. Oh, no. So... They're like, well, that's probable cause for violating the Federal Gun Free School Zones Act. You left your property, right? So, because it, it it couldn't possibly constitutionally apply to your own yard. <sighs> but then you walked up the street and back, and we watched you do it. And so he pled guilty to it. I hate this so much. I hate, I hate this it one. too. And that's the I hate it on so many levels. Right. Because I hate it on the level. That he's being a nuisance to the point that people feel unsafe and then therefore want to take action. Right. I hate it on the level where they get him on a technicality when he clearly wasn't trying to harm any children. I hate it on the level where somebody's behaving kind of weird and maybe we don't want him to be armed around the children. But also I hate it on the level that it's a thousand feet and it's birdshot, so they're probably fine. <laughs> like, I just, like, there's so many, like, it's, yeah. a, it's a ping pong match of, okay, but did we really need this guy to go to prison like this is the part where i'm just like could we just have maybe did he get a plea deal of like just don't go outside probo. with it please probo only. Huh? huh probo probation i mean that's that's good i guess but he loses gun rights forever which no that's not good never mind i don't like that <laughs> should, like should, the probation should have been like just keep it in the house please because it's freaking yeah. everybody out so now oh. and watch you know what's gonna happen now that neighbor is going to come and beat his mom up. <laughs> well, I mean, he's, he's going to make it in the door before he gets hit by the bird shot. <laughs> but yeah, no, and I I just love this where they said they, because I read the uh, the affidavits, and they said that they seized his shotgun and his six rounds of ammunition. Oh my God. Man. My man literally just had his loaded shotgun. That was it. It tells you he had one in the chamber, too. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> like, yep. I feel so conflicted on this one because this is one of those times where once the law is involved, like once you get a court involved, you don't really have like a soft option sometimes. Yeah. Because I think the soft option would be like, hey, bro, can we put this, can we, can we put this contingent to you just please not taking it outside like that? Yeah. Like just yeah, solve the problem. Like, 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 look, we could get you on this technicality and, you know, can we maybe just, not. Maybe that was offered actually, and maybe he just was stupid about it. Well, it that was offered with the local cop, you know. And look at yeah, and then he battled on himself. Cops. Yeah, where the local uh, cops like, bro, just like knock it off, because if the feds find out, and he's like, well, I'll show you, I'll call the feds. <laughs> <laughs> feds will be on my side, <laughs> and they're like, okay, retard. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of really dumb cases, uh, before I forget, uh, our mutual friend Rusty. Uh, said he's willing to talk publicly about his uh, case that happened. So okay. we should definitely arrange an interview on this show for that. <laughs> It'd be funny. Yeah, I know. <sighs> we should do that. That's good. But so, yeah, I like, I feel bad for the dude. I do, because he's probably not all, you know, his marbles are probably a little loose. But evidently, like, if he was harmful. He How stupid are we going to feel if the neighbor makes it to mom, though? No, I was I I called it. It's gonna it's gonna happen. Like this dude, he's, he's gonna be vindicated, and there's gonna be no way to restore his gun rights because that's how this federal system works. Hmm. So I hate it. <laughs> it's the hero we deserve, yeah. not the one we asked for. Uh, okay, this next one. Oh yeah, California. They're doing the thing that they always do. A new bill by Senator. Tantino, who doesn't remember who the gun laws originally targeted. This doesn't sound like a California law, to be honest with you. It doesn't? No. It, well, anal registration? Why would they <laughs> register that? <laughs> Annual registration of Oh, there's a U in there. Yeah. There's an, <laughs> putting the U in anal. Yeah. This, there's a, a, a new proposed bill, which is basically requiring that every year you'd have to check in, have your guns come in for a little checkup. Um, Wait, do you have to bring in the guns? Bill would specify so the bill would require every firearm in the state, except those specifically 
exempted to be annually registered with the department, require the registrant to annually pay a fee, uh, deposit to a special fund. The bill would require the department to establish and maintain a system for the annual re registration and require the department to make reasonable efforts to notify firearms owners their registration requirements. So it's literally like vehicle, motor vehicle registration. Like. Oh my God. You know what the worst part is? I don't know if this is just them being anti gun or them just looking for another form of like tax revenue. <laughs> registration shall not be deemed evidence that the registrant is lawfully permitted to own or possess the firearm. <laughs> We can only use this against you. Yeah. <laughs> Nor that they are the lawful owner of the fire. Oh, my God. On this bill, uh, it drew criticism, you know, in committee, it drew criticism from, like, you know, uh, you know other heads of gun, you know, quote, unquote, gun safety, right? That, you know, the anti-gunners in California criticized this bill as, like, yeah, yeah, we think this might actually infringe on people's rights, which was interesting. Wait, what? The, where they were like, you know, the, 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 you know, this is like, you know, this is obviously sort of like the most extreme end of gun control right. where it's, uh, <laughs> we're do going you, to make it so the poor people can't. That's our, you know, that they're, <laughs> do, the, you, do you think that maybe they took that stance because they, some of them are smart enough to understand that this could end up in a higher court and therefore the whole registry could get turned out? I think it's more like they were like, bro, that's too far. <laughs> like, literally, <laughs> we, we can't campaign back. on, we can't campaign on. I respect the Second Amendment, but I, I don't think they think it's too far. I doubt it. I don't know. They probably man. think it's too far to get away with it. Having to pay, yeah, you know, yeah. No, that's that's what I'm saying. I think they're too, they're afraid of losing ground in the long run. No, they're like, hey, if we go this hard, they'll take our treats away. Like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What that's what. No, I'm with you. I agree. Uh, they're like, I wish. Right. No, they've openly said we our end game is banning all guns. Yeah, the smarter thing to do is just establish like. You need to make micro schools every thousand feet, and then there'll be no guns. <laughs> no micro schools. No, here, no, check it out. Universal animal suffrage, uh -huh. right? Ant colleges. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. <laughs> it's done. How you stuck on your stupid little property, gun owner. <laughs> 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 <sighs> yeah thanks so, guys you know what else good luck ffl payment processing solutions guys it's fflpaymentprocessing.com if you or a loved one or an unloved one is in the firearms business or any related business they need to check out fflpaymentprocessing.com they'll get you better rates and they will never turn you down because you deal with guns because guess what it's ffl payment solutions guys yeah if you have a business and you haven't been bought by psa yet then <laughs> you could you probably have. do this. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? Really? It doesn't matter. It will probably save you some money. So uh, go to FFLPaymentProcessing.com. And if you use code FUDBUSTERS, it's not really a code. It's when you talk to them, tell them I sent you. Uh, they'll give you free uh, processing equipment. And uh, that's like a 200 and some odd dollars value. So guys, FFLPaymentProcessing.com. Tell them that the FUD buster busted you over. His knee. What? <laughs> I don't think I want to tell them that. <laughs> well, I guess uh -huh. you could tell them something else as long as you say my name. <laughs> well, not my name. The show's name. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, this is great. So Colorado okay. is such a cute little state. Um, I feel so bad for Coloradans. Yeah, it, like they don't. It's it like vampire rules. They. It. They yeah they let they open the door and then the vampire came in you know yeah. what I mean like they they did it to themselves or at least they they the guys that don't like this would say well the leadership did it but right man like I've never seen a state just sort of mm. <laughs> there was like a light switch yeah it's just like uh this guy keeps showing up and biting my neck <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not gonna turn him down it's cold <laughs> you know it's tourism money we need tourism money. So yeah, if you you already need an FFL to deal in guns, that's fine. But what about a CFL, a Colorado oh, firearm? Was light? that the complex fluorescent lights? They don't sell those anymore. <laughs> you, yeah, so they had to replace it with the Colorado Firearms Dealers License. A uh, new bill in the Colorado Legislature would require state license for gun dealers. Wait, go back up. 
Go back. They tried to take a picture. Of, they tried to take a picture of a scary gun, but they didn't know. <laughs> yeah, no, these are both <laughs> like Squires Bingham's. <laughs> like it's like a for those audio listeners, it's like a twenty-two AR thing. Like one of those twenty-twos that vaguely looks like an AR. That was definitely made in the Philippines. Yes, it's, it's got We're, a fake forward assist on it. It's got a fake it forward. Does assist. nothing. It's just there. Yeah, it's just there. Fake forward assist and grip screws that go transverse. <laughs> Excuse me. It does something when you drop it. It keeps it from cracking the charging handle off. <laughs> the charging handle that totally is functional. No, I meant the actual one at the front. <laughs> oh, 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 I see. The, the, the dust. Oh, got it. Uh, <laughs> side charging yeah. ARs are cool. <laughs> In a statement on social media, one sponsor, Andy. Oh, Snecker says firearm dealers could be the first line of defense against gun violence if they are given the proper tools, which is what this legislation aims to do. So Prevent by tools, they're going to... Yeah, I was like, <laughs> the tool is we're going to mess with your business and charge you extra money and make it even more convoluted. Yeah, the tool is you now have to complete this Rubik's Cube before every transaction. Right, which also, by the way, still is another layer of removing discretion because right. that all is up to the state, and the state always figures out who's going to attack first, right? Like the, We've never had the state not identify dangerous... Oh, wait. I don't know what you're talking about. It's the government. My last inspection took about six weeks. Now they're talking about having another inspection. So why? The end result? The consumer is picking up the cost evil uh capitalist gun shop owner in colorado said this is really awful because if you don't have your local ffls and especially a plurality of them the ability to have a bajillion of them pop up on kitchen tables everywhere then how are you going to constantly have someone willing to transfer psa products at 20 dollars a pop <laughs> no you're just going to go to the psa mega store they don't have they done one out of south carolina yet i don't know yeah see you see, this is the future. It's going to be fine. <laughs> it's all going to be fine. You just go to the PSA store and they'll inject you. With we the... can't have PSA stores because there's going to be mini schools every thousand feet. <laughs> <laughs> PSA will buy Costco next. Just watch. <laughs> <laughs> Costco would be a bl great place to store those lowers. I want to say something scary now while we're uh, on the topic of weird legislation getting us in the pants. I'm scared of self-driving cars because we know, okay, self-driving cars become a thing. What's the very first thing that happens after that? They ban the regular one. Well, yes, but besides the ban, what happens is cars become a service industry oh, because yeah. no, once they're self-driving, well, you, you can't own your own car. You know, it's gotta be like, it's gotta be a service, right? It's gonna be Uber merged with self-driving cars, right? White man thinks he can own car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, in all seriousness, this is my conspiratorial side, right? The minute self-driving cars become absolutely reliable, the, it's gonna the car as a thing that you own is gonna be it's gonna become public transport. You're just gonna like you're gonna schedule a car, they're gonna talk about it as a service, and they're gonna slowly mandate it, right? But the minute that happens, can't take the EULA, you know, EULA is gonna say that you're not allowed to have guns in the car. Like that is what I'm scared of. I wonder. So I don't think that they can constitutionally get like they cannot Did constitutionally prohibit vehicle ownership but it would not be hard to make it pretty damn hard right and then the eula and then they say because yeah. because if it's a monopoly in the government's favor they don't give a crap so they're gonna say, <laughs> well, look the eula says you can't have them. it's not our fault nobody lets you do that you know? <laughs> it's gonna be awful yeah awful yeah it's gonna be terrible i yeah. have always said i've always said like that if they take that away from me what the car uh, yeah the ability because i love my old gar like i like old trash guns and i like my old trash car yeah you're like a raccoon <laughs> yeah but i've got a, a 95 chevy 1500 that i love and now i've been driving around in an 85 diesel mercedes that i love Oh, where did that come from i think i remember yeah my best man gave it to me at wedding time but I would I would lose my shit. Like people people threatening uh, people threatening me that I'm gonna have to drive a car with like you know computer controlled fuel system. It already like upsets me. 
if, if they're gonna so try are we gonna to rant them. about why carburetors were wiped out by fuel injectors because they changed the fuel not because they were inferior the carburetors are inferior <laughs> yeah, on four wheels yeah but on two wheels uh, two wheels yeah it's, it, it took a long time for it to catch up but, yeah yeah because yeah. the mapping anyway yeah they're in the <laughs> flow but yeah yeah, yeah. and I come on this. I like how I come on here and I ruin this podcast every time because I can lure you into some crack that you already know about that's not related to anything. Yeah, also, I haven't been weirdly talking quiet. about Macoonies and Keans. I even say something. I, I have no completely... thoughts. My head is empty. <laughs> <laughs> head empty, belly full. You haven't converted. You haven't converted him to being like a, a motor guy. He's a huge motor guy. No, motors are bad. <laughs> Con- converting converting linear motion to rotational motion is illegal. They've taken us for absolute fools. <laughs> There's no wheel in nature. <laughs> <laughs> the white man had to bring us the wheel. <laughs> it's like birds that fly around. There's flying in nature, but not wheels. God made walking. God made running. God did not make automobile. <laughs> this yeah. is clearly the creation of the devil. Yeah, the devil, Henry Ford, and Hitler working in concrete. <laughs> Wait, now you're starting to make him sound cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Speaking of things that are cool. I'm really getting spooked by this guy behind you. It just keeps There's no guy me. behind me. You need to stop talking about that. You're going to freak out the listeners. The audio Don't listeners are probably scared. <laughs> Don't ask them which kind of Volks was supposed to be riding in which wagons. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like it when you ask. That. They hate it when they know. <laughs> Shut it down. Um, so we, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how Illinois, or was it Chicago? Specific? Chicago, specifically. Chicago. City of Chicago. Chicago was, was, was going to sue Glock because Glock had made the gun an illegal machine gun that is readily restored. Readily restorable. Readily restore a convertible. Readily could convert a restore gun to shoot automatically the machine gun. Right. Which is total maniac nonsense. To be fair, that uh, you know that makes sense when you're the kind of idiot that thinks making a machine gun requires more parts, not fewer. <laughs> yeah. Does, does that make sense? Like, yeah. They, they don't understand what a disconnect is and that it's an extra step. Yeah. So they're just like, well, obviously, how would you make a thing that... You could just like because they're not thinking you disable a function of the gun. They're thinking that you're somehow, you know, adding a patch to it. It was, it was the hot coffee mod for yeah, uh, yeah, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, that's what they're imagining. That's, they're imagining that. Yeah, they're. Ex- oh, that's good. Yeah, no, they're acting like you left all the code in here and all they right. had to do was do a little patch. <laughs> they had to do just, like, just put no, on. you idiot! They disabled the thing that's supposed to do that. Yeah. Like, no, the like the gun wants to do that. We stopped it, right? Yeah. But uh, but yeah. So now, praise God, Minnesota has joined up, and they have the Minnesota Attorney General and twelve others have notified Glock of the possibility that they're going to be coming for him. I think Minnesota. Glock's getting sued because Wish dot com is a thing. Dude, this is insane, <laughs> and also like. I think one of the only self-loading handguns that doesn't really want to go fast is the 1911. It it like gets a little fussy about it. Well, it suffered. It, it, so the thing is, it's hammer follow. Yeah. Um. Although, in theory, there's a lot of handguns that if the uh, the out of battery disconnect can essentially act as a safety uh, sear that then becomes your drop sear yeah. for a full. You get my point. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. But the if that's why slam fire works in old shotguns by the way exactly. it's not just that you can pump and it doesn't have a disconnect it's that they have a mechanism that holds the hammer back until the system is in battery and then it releases the hammer yeah and that that can be a good thing because it's just an out of battery safety you don't want the hammer to be able to fall down when you're not in battery but then you could piggyback that in order yeah. to do a bad it was designed <laughs> i mean cool for, thing. Uh, it was designed so that when you lazily slurp your, uh, you know, your pump twenty two forward and pull the trigger, you don't get a face full of brass. Right. Uh, and then people happen to notice that if you hold the trigger and jerk off your twenty two, it makes a funny noise. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I can tell I can tell you personally that out of battery safeties are good because Doc tried to blow himself up last weekend. He found some old I've, he found some old like high standard twenty gauge and went out in the middle of the property without anybody around and then proceeds to like whip it and he gets an out of battery that shreds the gun and thankfully doesn't hurt him. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Kind of need those. So, yeah, Minnesota's chief legal officer is among a group of 13 attorneys general that have notified Glock of a possible lawsuit over how easy it is to turn its pistols into machine gun. What does that mean, by the way? Yeah, what the fuck? What does it mean to say, hey, I might sue you? I think I think it's like an official notice, like, don't delete records. If you delete any records at this point, then we're going to take that as an indication of criminal action. Should we decide to sue you? What record are you going to delete? The, 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 the email where it's like... Well, uh-huh. so they, they specifically asked for Glock to retain any discussion internal to Glock, be it emails or memos or whatever, regarding how aware they were that guns could be converted. Yeah. If they were aware that they could be converted so easily, and if they'd ever considered this is what it would take to defeat that conversion mechanism. And I'm sure the latter there they have to have. Like, you know, if, if you work at Glock... Right. If, if, if you're there at Glock and you're a Glock engineer, surely you see like, oh, okay, well, we could just do this. And then on the fifth generation Glock, they kind of half-assed doing that. And just like last time, uh, because it's YouTube, we won't say like ha- how exactly that's defeated, but it's not difficult at all. And in fact, it's Man, are, the fifth, are, the fifth, are the fifth generations easier to defeat than the previous generations? Well, the, well there was the, nothing the pre- to defeat previously. <laughs> Right. There, there really wasn't much at all to defeat in previous. Oh, generations. so they made an attempt to stop this from happening. Right. Which is they actually put contrary. Little, put a little plastic wall ahead of where uh, the Douglas dugs. Oh, so the yeah. Okay. I'm not going to say it, but I, I already yeah. see how to defeat this. To yeah. be fair, though, what, what else are you going to do? No matter how much you stack up, somebody with a Dremel can. You know what I mean? Like, Well, the, the thing that might get Glock in trouble here is if, if you're familiar with the Glock performance trigger. It's a whole, you know, it still drops into a Gen 5 or Gen 4 as well, I think, clock. But the sear, trigger, disconnector interface is completely different. Yeah, it's a full so they've, it's a, they've like entirely redesigned how that works. And you know, existing Glock sear designs wouldn't do anything with it. And so I my concern is that th- this is an action being brought under Illinois' like consumer protection for guns yeah. stupid law. And it's being brought in state court. And the reason that they're dancing around, oh, but it's readily convertible, but they're not going to say it's readily restored is because they don't want this to get removed to federal court. They really badly want there to not be a Second Amendment defense or invocation or question at all here. No question of federal gun law whatsoever, please. They just want to deal with. And I guess Illinois ends up being the perfect test case for this because it's got some version of a machine gun ban. It's got some version of a you know, this sort of idiotic consumer protection of the gun is so unsafe ban. Yeah, it's just and, a, they, it's their their they passed a law saying placa is not real in this state, right? Because it's we, very we, odd that you can make a is. claim that the product isn't safe when people are willfully tampering with the product well no but it's right. we've redefined what unsafe means yeah yeah, yeah. so right. now it's unsafe it's it's a fine what, what don't you understand unsafe means somebody could do something unsafe with it <laughs> what do they do about <laughs> angle grinders thing. where we always take off that little safety cover like the first thing i never take that i mean nobody does that why would anybody do that i mean i i <laughs> I use angle grinders and flip flops, so I do leave the guard on. <laughs> I, uh, I've had enough sparks on my toes. You guys are scaring me. <laughs> Not enough sparks on my toes to wear shoes, mind you. But yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that's that's really something. But here's the funny thing: is this all comes full circle, right? And just the really hilarious way this winds up is for Glock to say. Well, yeah, we could have put a different trigger if California would let us. <laughs> We're stuck Ooh. making the gun we designed in the 90s of course, because of California. I, I think the trouble Glock would get into there is what Chicago's asking them to do is, oh, we're not saying stop selling guns. We're saying that you, you know, it's like, it's like your, your death by a thousand cuts. Like you need, like, just like you have the, the Gen 3 Glock is ostensibly the California compliant Glock. Right. That's the reason Glock still makes them. 
you know, Chicago would then tell them, oh, you need to make a Chicago compliant Glock that's got a whole different trigger mechanism if you want to sell them anywhere in this state. So I don't understand, like, I feel like what you're saying makes sense if Chicago is thinking tactically. I don't understand how all of these different state AGs coming together doesn't completely fuck that up. Because now it's like, what happens when you take a bunch of state AGs and, and join them together? Do I you create I, a state law question. I think, I, think, I think if the state AGs are to step in, they'll need to use whatever their own state's versions of these laws are. And I assume they're taking this move as part of some coordinated effort where they're trying, they're trying to do two things, probably put pressure on Glock to actually, you know, earnestly have them have to retain records because you know, if, if this lawsuit with Chicago gets resolved and they just like delete everything like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, we dodged a bullet there. I'm sure these AGs, you know, they, they want their sort of like pound of flesh as well. But sort of the second thing is you j just by these AG sort of virtue signaling here, like, oh, we're really concerned with this. This is such a major problem. If you look at the composition of Illinois state Supreme Court, which is where this will invariably end up, like half of them are put there by you know, or directly sponsored and campaigned with anti-gunners. Uh, it's not a very great situation that Glock finds themselves in. And I think these state AGs realize that if this goes the way it's likely to go, where Glock ends up you know, having to settle or ends up being in trouble for this, these state AGs are going to want to sue because you know, they also have all of their own problem cities that have lots of Glock switches. And if, if this is sort of the avenue that this has, you know, the river this has to flow down in order for them to get their little victory, I'm um, you. Know, why, why wouldn't they at that point? To be fair, there's never any splashback for any of this crap. That's nope. the problem. I mean, there there is no punishment for overextending against the rights of the citizen over and over. And so every time, like it's so weird because everybody gets so. I see this a lot. I see a lot of people, whenever something like this is defeated, they'll start clapping and they get kind of excited. And they're like, yeah, take that. And I go, they felt nothing. They didn't spend their own money. They spent our money. Yeah. They didn't get fired. They didn't get oh, voted yeah. out. They, they, they just, they were in the newspaper for a while and everybody looked at them and then they can just do it again in six months. Yep. Like, it, it, there's nothing stopping this crap. Nope. And it's especially egregious when you have, you know, in, in situations like these states with these, you know, these idiotic laws where it's uh you're you're doing a public nuisance and making a public unsafety where these laws are sort of structured in some cases specifically to let states enforce their laws against other states and, and you know actors within those other states which it, it it creates very interesting constitutional questions and hopefully eventually one of these cases doesn't just get because you know, the problem for now is all you know, all of the parties in these cases on the program side are just settling out and they're settling out like not in an easy settle out that's like we'll no longer sell guns in your state and here's millions of dollars and we're so sorry we realize we right. fucked up that one of these groups one of these entities eventually needs to ride this you know through these individual states supreme courts which will be expensive and painful and then try and get this in front of the supreme court because it's it's extremely fucked up that a separate state is going to make your conduct in your home state illegal when that conduct is that which is if not you know, if not the exact you know the, the the core backbone of the second amendment it's it's like a it's a, it's a prerequisite a necessary element of that like you can't make selling guns in one state illegal or designing guns in one state illegal or telling people in another state how to make guns illegal that's insane and not it's certainly something the federal government should say hey retards the only reason we exist is so you don't do this i wonder how much the unwillingness to fight comes from the fact that a lot of these companies tend to be split uh leadership between here and other countries and have totally different cultures that they're already dealing with in europe where they just go oh well we already have to do this in europe so whatever I think the big one, the, the big one I'm thinking of is you know, the New York one where everybody named what was like Brownells settled out, Armor Ally settled out. <laughs> There's the one Florida company that didn't settle out, which was really yeah, funny. So funny. <laughs> I love him. Wait, what was the Florida company that didn't settle out? Uh, he he just like straight up decided that court was for losers. <laughs> yeah, no, he, <laughs> he just didn't go. He straight said, "Go fuck yourself." Um, and did, uh, they, did they get him? 
How, no. I mean, they can't. I mean, so so here's the thing. What are they right? do to them? <laughs> and maybe this is the pro gamer strap. How is how stupid are you? Like, how do how bad do you feel if you're like Brownells or whatever? It's just like, wait, that guy just said. Well, no, because no. like, well, but here's the thing: Brownells is like a big company that has like assets that it transfers around and can be tracked. And at right. some point, it's not unlikely that they touch something within the jurisdiction of New York. Like, right. I mean, how many banks, right, are within? Like, right, right, right. so, but if you're just a dude and you <laughs> yeah. run all your shit through your local bank and it's like, oh yeah, the New York, <laughs> Bye. The, the New York court says that you like this and that. It's like, all right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I won't <laughs> go, go there. Yourself. And yeah. I'm not sure if this guy is the perfect way for this to be explored, but I think it may be a, a pro gamer strat where. Like you, you, you have a guy very into uh, just just start sending you know eighty percent kit build stuff to New York, and he gets New York to sue him. He doesn't show up to state court in New York because why the fuck would he? Uh, state of court, state uh, state court in New York just absolutely destroys him. It's like you you owe the the state of one grillion dollars, and you have to say you're <laughs> right, sorry, right. and you have to write on the blackboard a million times what a bad yeah. boy you are, and then he's right. just like. No, and then he starts selling. <laughs> he starts doing it again because right. it, I think at that. What are you gonna do? Come and get him. Yeah. Well, I think at that point, if you're if you're in, you know, in active defiance of a state court's order, I think at that point they can bring it to federal court. But here's the thing: I think at that point you get your second amendment defense, where you're like, "Dude, I'm right, selling gun big. parts. <laughs> you can't right. be selling gun parts illegal." <laughs> And so you, that that way you like you because know, if you were to try and fight this in state court and then write it up to the state supreme court, it's going to take you ten years. They're going right. to make that so slow and so expensive. I think the gamer strat is just like make it expensive for them, and you never. Yeah, you got to you got to incentivize them to go to the federal court, right? Yeah. So they well, try and haul you to federal court. <laughs> on a completely unrelated note, it's Math Corporation. Guys, there's a big sale right now on AKM Chime Kits. Well, look at that. Headspace with a delicious Polish pierogi-flavored barrel. Mm. Uh, it's yours. $699. You check it out. Go to maf-arms.com. Use promotional code FUDBUSTERS. Get your any stickers? Yeah, I got stickers. Or stickers. You want some? Show me stickers. Okay, I'm going to just get you some, okay? All right, no, but yeah, guys, mafdarms.com, check it out. Browse around the site, see what's up. There's a lot of new and interesting items you what's might not have seen what's that? before. What? Well, what's that? It's got Uzi on it. Yeah, it's a trigger confidence shirt. That's the pounder. Mm. <laughs> it's the pounder. Yeah. What colors does that come in? It comes in um, all of the colors that are available. Oh, that's nice. I like that. I think there's at least eight. <laughs> that's all the colors, right? Yeah. And then also that there's that guy. <laughs> <laughs> guys, the regular. Oh, yeah, it's great. I've have heard unconfirmed reports that if you wear this shirt to your uh, state required concealed carry training classes, you you don't even have to sit through the rest of the class. They'll just they'll just sign off on the certificate and be like, "This guy gets it." That's probably not true. Yeah, but we could believe. Yeah, I believe whatever I want. Yeah, we we know this about you actually. <laughs> 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 all right so oh i'm this i'm like i'm a bit jazzed about this bio fire company okay. somebody's mic hold on wait 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 somebody's mic is getting banged on their table and it's going to drive the listeners crazy it was me and i have individual audio tracks recorded and all oh, okay good just making yeah. sure um but yeah this one's actually got me a little jazzed up the uh bio fire company is a uh, they're saying their their smart gun is here, and uh, NBC News is asking, "Will it work?" So <laughs> this, <laughs> that's a va- it's, that's a it's voucher. It's bad when NBC is asking, "Will it work?" Yeah. <laughs> Wait, which question are they asking? Are they asking, "Will the gun work?" Or, or is are it they finally asking, here? <laughs> or, or are they asking, "Will this plan to ruin the gun industry work?" Yeah, or is it finally here? Uh, so they're claiming. That uh, that they're not trying to ruin the gun industry, uh, right? Like they're doing a few things, like you know, refusing to sell it to states where you know, like New, New Jersey, where if one of these becomes available, then every that's the only thing you can buy. Um, they're also de- very clearly not trying to destroy the gun industry because they've made their nine millimeter self loading pistol the size of a small truck. <laughs> um, 
it, it, it's really Desert Eagle sized. Like the, 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 their promotional pictures, it's like, oh, that's a regular sized handgun. And then whenever whenever you see it, like in a the hands of people who are paid to talk about it on YouTube channels about guns that are supposed to be old, uh, you can see that the gun is actually quite massive. <laughs> well, the they told us that. Uh, well, they told you specifically that you could have one. Yeah, they, they, uh, like, they, they said that I could have one because whenever, whenever this was like sort of unveiled how it would work and their patents all they're, they're all pending, but they were like published or whatever right. so that you can read them. I went and perused them and I noticed a couple of ways that you could maybe do something funny with the way their gun works. <laughs> and so, you know, I took to Twitter saying like, this is an extremely expensive gun. It's huge. It's massive. It's heavy. It seems kind of stupid to me. And I can't, you know, I want to get one just to try and do funny stuff to it. You'll know, jailbreak it, if you will. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, we, we, we caused we caused a little bit of trouble, and then I, th I think it's this fellow here on the screen, the CEO of the company, reached out to me through their Twitter account and was like, "Hey, it's, it's glad you're excited about it. The interaction's been cool, or whatever." And I'm like, "I've just been shitting on you, but okay." <laughs> to be fair, when you're doing the smart gun thing, you got to learn to roll with the punches. That, that's certainly yeah. true. And so, like, I sort of mentioned, like, "Yeah, I'm interested in like I'm messing with it. I mess with your gun just a little bit." And they said that they're they going to do like a. Uh, I don't know, like a beta program or whatever or something, and then yeah. that didn't end up panning out. But now I'm going to continue harassing them. You know, since, since since I've got DMs to them, I'm just going to harass them every day until they give me a gun. Well, and so I have a... <laughs> Are they doing the fingerprint thing still? Yeah, yeah. it's fingerprint so, so it's... and facial recognition. Yeah. Oh, God. So, so I have decided that this is very important and a first priority, and so I have done this. Wait, 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 wait. It does facial recognition? What? It's, uh, well, read your thing because I have an idea. You read uh, it. Matt. I have I have tweeted. This is the official call to my Twitter friends to brigade BioFire USA and harass them until they cave to demands to send myself and Ivan their smartest guns for us to test and possibly feed to the gun eater. And uh, people have been doing <laughs> a pretty good job. Yeah, so exactly. I expect we'll get we'll get those soon. All right, what I want to know is if it does the facial recognition thing. Can you can we get one like a manual safety? It is not going to tell you that there's a person behind me. <clears throat> no, I want one with a manual <laughs> safety. Oh, that would be really good too, actually. Like if it has like think about it this way. Okay, you want to sell facial recognition technology to somebody, and it's just like, yeah, yeah, it's got a camera on it. It's so got auto aim. If anybody's sneaking up behind you. <laughs> and if it detects a second face behind you, it, it throws up a red flag to turn around. Yeah. And then that's how they market it, right? But what I was going to say is it should be like if you flip the safety up, like a manual safety, when you flip it up, when you pull the trigger, it should take a selfie. But then... <laughs> 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 this is admissible. <laughs> like if we already got the camera. Why don't you just take a picture every time you pull the trigger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're in court, it's like, are you smiling? <laughs> you do a 10 second video every time, you know, get five every seconds time. before the trigger is pulled and five seconds after. Because that yeah, was like, like the videos. worst body camera footage. Because imagine if all body camera footage was just the, the back of the gun <laughs> pointing at the cop. Well, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but here's what you do this, you have to do your self defense drills. All right, ready? Beep. Boom. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, put yourself in my position. <laughs> <laughs> oh I didn't God. want it to come to this. Bang. No, it's like the South Park episode. It's just, they're coming right for us. <laughs> That's all you do. <laughs> I'm in fear for my life. Bang. I'm in fear for my life. Bang. I just feel like the easier way to do this is to just have everybody be forcibly, uh, forcibly receive a Second Amendment chip. Um, and then that way... <laughs> It's just installed in their palm, and uh, that's what the gun reads. It's just chip everybody and uh, just turn their rights on and off remotely. It's fine. Yeah, remotely, and so that way we know. Uh, you, you can put it in with the GPS. Look, you, the oh, felon oh, beater terrorist. Hey, you know what? You put you give them the you give them the Second Amendment chip, right? And as long as they haven't done any misdemeanors at all, right? They get to use their gun as long as it's more than a thousand feet away from any of the mini schools, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not after eight p.m. So they don't wake anybody up. Yeah, because that would be a travesty. <laughs> if you were a thousand feet from the latest mini school, you know that everyone could hear you. <laughs>
<laughs> we're laughing, but this is exactly what they do. I mean, they'd, they'd run it like an HOA. No, they'd be like, of course your rights are respected. You can shoot your gun between these hours at, at these times and on the 4th of July. If there's a lunar eclipse. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. That's good. That's good. But yeah, so Biofire, I'm not being ironic. Give me the gun. Give me the fucking gun. God Give damn me it. The fucking gun. I want the gun, but I want them to do the selfie thing. That is really hilarious. You and that promise me. Is it's on the short list of the shit we gotta do to it. <laughs> it, needs, it needs to print it out like a uh, you know the photo booth. <laughs> you know the photo booth where it snaps like seven pictures or whatever and then prints them out afterwards <laughs> all at once. It's the same thing. It needs to be like you empty the mag and then it prints out it, what is it, a single stack? Is it like nine rounds? Yeah. <laughs> it just prints out like <laughs> it's gonna be like the Game Boy Advance photo printer or whatever. <laughs> you just plug it in, and it just spits it out, and you're like, "Oh, look, I had a good time." <laughs> That's so good. All right, last story we've got here: uh, Anti Ken Group plagiarizes photos of top female shooters to gaslight the public. This is great. What? So yeah, ninety-seven percent. This is what is it Brady or Giffords? I don't know. They're all the okay, same. One of them. They uh, they're like an astroturf group to say we're gun owners and we want this safe stuff and they literally like just scraped a bunch of images of female shooters and like took their bios and like was this, posted was this, them to was this attribute to... them as like supporting gun control. that's what i was gonna say was this to make people feel like they were involved in this whatever bull yes well, so, so how, you know, in, in terms of stuff like this, right, it's very important or it's at least very helpful to be able to prove people actually got confused by it. Right. So wait, the, the, so, the first one of these I saw was for Kim Rohde. And I was like, Kim Rohde is suing the state of California over ammunition background checks. There's no fucking way Kim Rohde's on board with what 97% is selling. So I went and looked she, through her bio and that was nowhere there. And like, she, she, she had no connection to them. And I was like Googling, like, Kim, there's no way Kim Rohde's affiliated with them and it wasn't and so i was like oh that's weird but then they started posting other people including Rhonda azel who was like as far from being okay with what 97 percent org is trying to do yeah this is anyone this this one has um the article even has a picture of jolly gollum so she didn't do that no <laughs> none of them did that <laughs> <laughs> uh, i always like lee williams's picture of an akm with an ak-74 break on it huge so wait did they um has there been a lawsuit about this yet uh there's uh, there's them. like some of them are talking to lawyers yeah i mean i would because you gotta understand like being associated with a anti-2a association as a 2a advocate would be very damn or just well even not 2a advocate just gun of uh, like related person that's like very damaging. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at how much your reputation took a hit from the last couple episodes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Carl Crusada and you. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I, like I, uh, I sent you his phone number so you guys could, you know, could commiserate together about me. <laughs> Is this what it feels like, like to be Irish, or I'm like, at least I'm not Carl. At least <laughs> he hates. They hate Carl more than me. Oh, slightly. It's only because he's still doing it. <laughs> oh God, that that is funny. Drag queens are a foreign invader. <laughs> Listen, you don't understand. Military aged male for an invader. Chines are military aged <laughs> and they're coming across the border in droves and they are under a foreign flag. They are carrying flags and you want them to buy gun? <laughs> yeah, oh that's God. exactly what I said. <laughs> I said all of that actually. It's I funny. Said I didn't want to give the federal government any more mechanisms by which to do their bullshit, but go ahead. <laughs> Anyway, guys, Patriot Patch Company is, has custom designed patches, apparel, and accessories for any freedom loving individual. You got a new, there's, okay. What's Let's check out the patch of the month. No, you can't have any. You, you found me. It's a Claymore with a bunch of ordnance painted in nice colors. I can't wait to be honest with you. This one's kind of horrifying. 
Yeah, I kind of like it. <laughs> it's like really horrifying. Like, who thinks like Claymore and Easter egg hunt? I'm yeah. a little alarmed. <laughs> yeah. uh, Patriot Patch, are you guys okay over there? Yeah, uh, we're going to do a We're having some family problems, maybe getting a little irritated with the kids. <laughs> I really like the Valentine's one. You fill my Maybe. heart to full capacity. Some What's magazines. the Captain Crunch guy? What's that guy doing? Cap- <laughs> Captain Crunch. Oh, yeah. Nobody taking me R15. Yeah, guys, um, check out patriotpatch.co <laughs> and use promotional code uh, TWIG10. That's T-W-I-G-10. Get yourself a discount. And you can get yourself some of these fun little patches and, and have a nice time. So, yeah, patriotpatch.co. Longest sh- supporter of the show. They are the longest by inches. Any issues? <laughs> Y'all, it was a wiener joke. He did a wiener joke. No. It was a joke about giving a rat an inch. It's a mouse a cookie. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's so that's it. Is there any other business? No, this, we really went on a down note. We did, should have done a better job there. What did we and... do? We didn't do anything wrong. We were we had good time the whole time, and then we just sort of dropped the ball at the end. We don't have a good finisher. What would it take for Colt to be the opposite of antitrust? <laughs> <laughs> what they're, oh, here, uh, what they're doing right. now? Pu- no, no, no. Pull up uh, the Colt Wikipedia page. Okay. Okay. And now go down to the history section. That. <laughs> 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 Everything they did, if they do that, <laughs> hey, hey, while Sam was alive, they were doing his, their best possible job at being a monopoly. Yeah, they, like they were doing a very good job. He was clearly arguably not was... inventing very much, and then owning everything for a while there. And, and now they're doing their best possible job of being Czech. <laughs> Sometimes I think the Roland White patent only got as far as it did just so they could punish Colt. Like, <laughs> it's possible. Colt oh realized that you know believing in alchemy and and huffing nitrous oxide isn't exactly in vogue, <laughs> so they did the next best thing and decided to become Czech. <laughs> oh my god! All right, there's your good note. Thanks for coming, everybody. And Osiris, thank you so much for joining us. It was a great time. Yeah, I'm sorry that I made Ivan not talk, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs>